The murder hornet's queen can grow up to 2 inches long and their quarter inch stingers can pierce through normal beekeeping attire. The murder hornet, or also known as the hornets from hell, have officially been spotted in the United States. Today I'm going to go over everything you need to know about them and better yet, what to do if you actually get stung by an Asian giant hornet or any bee for that matter. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Jordan Wagner. I'm a board certified emergency medicine physician and on my show, I answer your urgent medical questions and clear up myths about certain deadly diseases. If you haven't already done so, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button now and turn your bell notifications on. That way you are instantly alerted when I post a new video. Just as we were beginning to get some sort of handle and basic understanding on COVID-19 and not have an all out panic every time we step out of our houses, insert ginormous murder hornet to also potentially wreak havoc on the United States. Or is it though? Should you be freaked out? I'm gonna get into all of that and whether or not you should actually be fearful of the menacing murder hornet. Known in the biology community as the Asian giant hornet, or by its fancy name, Vespa mandarinia, this buzzing creature is a huge, palm-sized, mean-looking insect with a potent sting. The murder hornet's queen can grow up to two inches long and their quarter-inch stingers can pierce through normal beekeeping attire. They are also ferocious predators capable of massacring entire honeybee hives in a matter of hours. Their weapon of choice? Decapitating thousands of the hive's adult bees and leaving the scene. All right, I know what you are thinking. Do they sting? Yes, and the sting of the Asian giant hornet is far more painful and toxic than that of a honeybee. Researchers have described the sensation of their sting to having a hot nail driven into one's flesh. However, I am lucky enough never to have been stung by one of these, so I'll have to take their word for it. Despite the hot nail in the skin talk, according to entomologists over at the Smithsonian, they say we shouldn't worry too much about it. According to them and their stats they've compiled, more people die of honeybee stings in the United States than die annually and globally from these hornets. For instance, about 60 to 80 people die from allergic reactions to honeybee stings in the United States, whereas only about 40 people die per year in Asia, mostly in Japan, from reactions to the giant hornet stings. Speaking of bee stings, let's segue right into allergic reactions as this is the most common reasons people get ill and die from hornet and bee stings. What happens when you get stung? Bees and wasps sting through a modified ovipositor, which is a tube-like organ. They puncture the skin with a hollow stinger and then inject their venom. Bees leave their barbed stinger in the skin along with the stinging apparatus, killing the bee altogether. Vespids, or wasps, yellow jackets, hornets, however, have smooth, less barbed stingers and can sting more than once. Normal vespids found in the United States are responsible for almost twice as many allergic reactions as honeybees. Reactions may be characterized as local or just a few hives without systemic symptoms and generalized. Local reactions may include the following, erythema, edema, warmth, tenderness, drainage from the sting site, compromised distal circulation as a result of the swelling or the edema, distal sensation loss from stings over peripheral nerves. Now, Generalized reactions include the following type of symptoms. Urticaria, which is diffuse hives, vomiting, wheezing, tachypnea, shortness of breath, hypotension, low blood pressure, laryngeal edema, facial edema, anything around the mouth, delirium, confusion, shock, and could cause respiratory arrest. With a systemic reaction that you get from a full-blown sting or other allergic reactions, say like medications, then it can target organs such as the skin, vascular system and respiratory system. For those reactions, rapid onset of symptoms is the rule. 50% of deaths occur within 30 minutes of a sting and 75% occur within four hours. Fatal allergic reactions can occur as the first generalized reaction, but far more common, however, is a fatal reaction following a previous milder generalized reaction. In other words, if you've gotten stung twice in a short period of time, this can potentially increase the severity of the situation. The shorter the interval since the last thing, the more likely a severe reaction will take place. So what is the treatment if you get stung or have a reaction? Reactions can range from minor to life-threatening and a reaction can move fast. So seek immediate medical attention for any swelling, chest pain, shortness of breath, 
throat weird feelings, vomiting. Pretty much, unless it's just a minor sting wound at the sting site, you should probably get it checked out and or call 911. The major medications for treatment are histamine medications, which are over-the-counter medications like Benadryl or diphenhydramine, and Pepsid. Yes, I said Pepsid. It is an antacid, but it works on the receptors in your body that have to do with the release of histamine, which is what causes the majority of the body's reaction and allergic reaction. Another medication that we use are steroids to decrease the body's immune response. We also use IV fluids to help stabilize the blood pressure as the histamine causes the blood vessels to dilate, which can cause a drop in your blood pressure, also called hypotension. If you have a severe allergy, we'll use something called the EpiPen or epinephrine, which a lot of people already have, which is an injection right into a big muscle that can go straight through your clothing in an emergency. If you know you have a potential bee allergy, it is a good idea to have an EpiPen around in your house for possible emergent situations. If you ever use an EpiPen in an emergent situation, such as a bee sting allergic reaction, afterwards, you should seek emergent medical care or call 911. All right, that's been your five minutes on the murder hornet and allergic reactions with me, Dr. Wagner. Make sure you leave me a comment below if you have any other medical questions that you want answered or if you have a bee or hornet allergy and this concerns you, let me know that in the comments as well. And as always, make sure that you subscribe and turn your bell notifications on. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.